Hi, I'm Dr. Kevin Brown, and we are here today with my wonderful assistant, Jed, and our wonderful patient, Mason, who happens to have chipped his front tooth recently, and he was kind enough to let us film this so we can show how to use Tokuyama's newest composite, Omnichroma and Omnichroma Blocker. And as we go throughout this, this tutorial, we're gonna talk about how these materials work, why we need to use the blocker in conjunction with the Omnichroma in a situation like this, and we'll be able to go through the, the handling characteristics and all the wonderful things that these composites provide. For me, the biggest reasons to use this composite in my practice are its ease of use, because it's a one shade system that will match every single tooth that you use it on it simplifies everything. It simplifies the time in the chair. It simplifies the product that we have to carry in the office. Not having to keep so many different colors and brands. It just really helps with keeping the overhead down. Um, for the patient, it's always a, a perfect color match. So you don't have to worry about not getting it just right. And the patients are, are very happy about that. Especially when they know that they can whiten their teeth afterwards or if they're tooth happens to change color a little bit over time, this composite is going to match both, both scenarios. So it's really just a new uh, generation setting a new bar for composites. It's really an awesome material. So with that said, let's get started and we'll, we'll do this. Okay, <clears throat> so for Mason's tooth here, number nine, you can see he chipped the distal incisal edge. I'll add my little contraster here so you can kind of see what we have to work with. And in a situation like this where the tip of a front tooth breaks, we've all been there, we've had to restore these. And when we use um, a traditional composite system, we either have to use a bunch of different colors to try and get it to work. Or if we use a single shade of composite, initially it might look okay, but then as time goes on, it changes uh, because the tooth is gonna change, but the composite stays the same. So you get that color difference. With the Omnichroma, we don't have to worry about that. However, if we just used straight Omnichroma on this, because we're adding length back to the tooth, the way it works is Omnichroma grabs the color from the tooth to which it's bonded to obtain its color. Uh, because there's no pigment in it, it's using the structural color technology to be able to grab that color from the tooth. So it'll work really good up at the edge of the tooth where it's bonded to, but then as you get further away from that edge by adding length, you can get a little more translucency coming through it because it's not, it doesn't have the tooth uh, nearby to grab the color from. So that's where they develop the Omnichroma blocker. And what that is used for is on front teeth, you're gonna be able to add a little bit of the blocker to, to hide some of the surrounding colors that are happening in the mouth. The shadows from the back, um, the color of the tissues, the tongue, all that stuff. And so it's just gonna help seamlessly blend the color in with the length being added back on there. So we'll show a technique on how to do that. First, we need to prepare the tooth though. Um, in a case like this, where we need to make sure that the composite we put on is gonna be strong enough to withstand the forces that Mason's gonna put on there. We wanna feather the composite up onto the facial surface a little ways. And that'll help resist some of those protrusive forces that are just naturally gonna happen. So we're gonna bevel this facial cavo surface margin, probably a good two to three millimeters up onto the facial. And it's just a real soft infinity bevel very conservative, but just enough to allow us to feather the composite on for color blending, but also um, for strength. So let's do that first. So to do this, I'm gonna use a real fine grit flame tipped burr. And I'm just gonna go up at the tip here, I'll go at kind of a 45 degree angle. And then as I go up onto the facial, I'm gonna wrap it a little more flush so that there's no definable finish line. It's just going to be a, a nice infinity edge. All right. 
Sorry, dude. Excellent. Okay. All right. Now to go beyond this, to make sure that we get a perfectly seamless restoration, we know that the composite is going to need to be adapted and feathered beyond where we anticipate it to be. And then as we finish and polish it back, that'll bring it back to where we think it's going to end up. So we have this lightly roughened surface from the drill where we did the bevel, but beyond that, it's still smooth and shiny enamel. So we're going to use air abrasion to lightly micro etch beyond the drilling part, but we're not removing tooth structure. It's just making sure that we have a nice clean surface of enamel, that there's no plaque or bacteria stuck in these little uh, details of the tooth. So let's do that next. So the enamel is all nice and prepared. There's a few different techniques on how you can rebuild an incisal edge. You can freehand composite on there. Um, but if you have something to help kind of guide you, um, it really helps. So this is a, probably the most simple and basic way to do it with just a clear mylar strip. And you'll be able to just hold it right on the back side, and that way you can just get this first layer started with your instrument and then cure it. And then once you get that on, you don't need the mylar anymore. You can just layer on from there. All right, so let's do our tooth shampoo here with our etch. And again, we're gonna go beyond the cable surface margin here. I'm gonna put our mylar to block the adjacent tooth from the etch. So you can see how far I'm extending this etch. I only anticipate the composite having to go maybe to here about halfway, but I'm still gonna etch that far just because I wanna make sure I'm not leaving any enamel that's unprepared where I can put the composite on and then feather it back and get a nice seamless adaptation. All right, let's rinse that off. Perfect. All right, so now we're gonna use our bonding resin. And in this case, we're gonna to use Tokuyama's Universal Bond. And this stuff is awesome. It's a wonderful bonding resin because it is truly universal. It'll work on any material. And one of the advantages that I like about it is you don't have to worry about scrubbing it in for 15 or 20 seconds, and you don't have to light cure it. So that simplifies the process. And when you're using it on posterior teeth and deep interproximal boxes, you don't have to worry that the light's not reaching it. So we need to do our blocker layer next. We're gonna start with a kind of a, a palatal layer of the Omnichroma blocker, and then we can put our regular Omnichroma right over the top of that. So two layers is all we need. And controlling the thickness of the blocker layer is what you wanna be mindful of. If it's too thick, then you'll end up with a restoration that's too opaque. If you're too thin, then you might end up with a restoration that's a little too translucent, but it's not that technique sensitive. Um, like some materials. It's pretty straightforward. It's a very forgiving material. So, and we'll just lay that on the palette side. Now in Mason's case here, he doesn't have a lot of incisal translucency. So we don't need to worry about that. But our goal here is to get the blocker about a half millimeter thick. That's 
kind of the the average thickness that you're looking for. And I'll just see if I can remove some of this excess here. It doesn't have to be a perfect shape. You're just trying to get the basic outline and then you can finish and polish at the end. And it does help if you just lightly feather it up onto this incisal facial area. Matter of fact, maybe just for the, for the purpose of the video here, let me just leave it straight across to show something that I think is important. Okay, go ahead and zap that. So one of the hardest things to do on an anterior restoration, when you have a class four fracture, you got this angled part of the tooth, it's a hard line. And when you're trying to rebuild that back up with composite, it's hard to block that, that line on the tooth. So you can get this restoration on there, but you can still see this little shadow on the, on the incisal edge. It's a little translucent effect. And so you can tell something's there. So that's where this blocker is really helpful in masking that. So once you've established this, this shelf here with the blocker, it's hard to get a perfect shape. So what I like to do before I proceed on to the next step is just take a little disc and I'll clean up the edges. That's good enough. So now I've got a better shape to work with. And I know where all the next layers are gonna go. So um, if I put the contraster on here with the video, you might be able to see, but you can still slightly see a very faint translucent area here. So maybe I didn't get quite the thickness I needed on the blocker. So fortunately we can still just add a little bit more at this point. So I'll take just a little dab. I'll push it right up into that space. And that looks better. I can look at it and I can see that there's no light going through that hard line. It blocks it out really nice. All right, and then we'll just finish up with our top layer of the Omnichroma. And you'll see about how far beyond I layer this just to make sure it blends in really good and we get the strength we need. That part was partially cured. There we go. All right, go ahead and zap that. All right, so you probably can't tell because it just blends in so nice, but I brought the composite all the way up to about here. But as I polish and finish it back, it's not gonna be that far. It'll probably be about there. But the finishing and polishing will just help the enamel and the composite have the same texture and, and polish, it'll be perfect. That's about as invisible as it gets for restoration. So let's go ahead and finish it up. First, we'll use just a coarse and medium disc.
good. Nine is a little bit longer than eight, so we'll just leave it that way. I'm gonna block this for a second here. All right, looking good already. So the discs get the initial outline and seamless uh, margins. So now we're gonna do our texturizing and Mason has pretty smooth, pretty smooth teeth. So we don't need to worry too much about getting crazy here. So we'll just use our rubber polishing wheel. go. So because of the 260 nanometer size particles that make up Omnichroma, that's how it gets its structural color, but it also really makes for a nice handling property of this composite where you can sculpt it and move it around really nicely. It, it uh, just pushes and, and adapts really nicely. And then the polishing is just exceptional. It's, it's one of the best I've seen. It really shines up well and it holds for a long time uh, is what I'm finding. So when you polish composites on a front tooth, you don't want to over shine it because if it's too shiny and too polished against what a natural enamel looks like, then you can, you can see a little bit of a difference there. And so this little polishing brush works really good at getting the final shine without over polishing it and it matches up really well with the surrounding enamel. Okay, I didn't adjust the lingual side yet. Let's get the excess composite off there real quick. I can zoom in on that as close as I want to get and it is just perfectly, perfectly invisible. That is just awesome stuff. So Mason, if he wanted to whiten his teeth at some point, this composite will blend in with it because it's gathering its color from the surrounding tooth. As he gets old and rotten as time goes on, then his uh, composite's still gonna match because you know it'll just blend in perfectly. So. The technology behind it is wonderful, and I hope you guys can find as much joy and success with it as I have.